In a world where production companies just can't let things die. Live, damn it! Live! Where famous directors are given too much freedom. It's fun not listening to anybody and just doing what you want to do. One film will get a sequel after 36 years. <laughs> Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Don't ever say that name. Beetlejuice. <laughs> it's your time! Now, I think I have made myself pretty clear on how I feel about modern day sequels. They suck. To say the least, I am suspicious of them. Especially when I have lived my entire life in between the time of the original release and the sequel. But when I heard the original director Tim Burton was behind the project with original cast members plus Willem Dafoe, who is always a good addition to see, I thought, hey, maybe I'd give it a try. Also, full disclosure, I saw that Regal Theatres was selling this promotional popcorn bucket that would make a perfect addition to my Halloween decor, which is the real reason I went to the movie theaters. But since I was already there, I also saw Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. And it was not good. Shocking, I know. The best way I can describe this movie is fun, but weak. And what I mean by that is it had some fun parts and some good ideas. However, narratively, it was an absolute mess. And if I had to sum up the main overarching problem with the narrative, it would be bad editing. They had way too many elements in this film and they refused to cut any of it out. So much time was wasted on pointless things in this film. So you ended up with a bunch of half-baked ideas with no real development or conclusions making the entire film feel shallow, empty, and ultimately pointless. Which is a shame because with just a few edits this could have been a really good movie. So for my highbrow critic score, I give Beetlejuice Beetlejuice a 4 out of 10. And for my Schmo score, the score for the average Joe Schmo, I give it a 5 out of 10. Now, this is the part where I explain my reviews and get into spoilers. And not that I recommend you see this in theaters, cause I don't. But if you want to see this movie for yourself, spoiler free, this is where we part ways. Thanks for showing up and I want you to have a nice day. Now, as I mentioned, this movie had some good ideas. The problem was there were also a lot of bad, pointless ideas that for some reason did not get cut. Unfortunately, this movie has all the hallmarks of big famous director that no one is willing to say no to. For me, it was kind of going back into making stuff the way I like doing it shoot it, you know, make stuff up all uh, every day on a daily basis. Like what happened to George Lucas when he made the prequels. He forgot that the person who took all of his incoherent nonsense and turned it into a functional story was his editor, Marshall Lucas. Space of about 90 seconds, you know, you go from lamenting the death of, you know, a hero to escape to slightly comedic with Jar Jar. I mean, I've thought about this quite a bit, and the tricky part is you almost can't take any of those pieces out of there now, because no, each one kind of yeah, takes, takes you, you to the next place, the next and you thing. can't you can't jump. I may have gone too far in a few places. Because it doesn't matter how talented you are, if you don't have people around you to keep you on track, you will always derail yourself. This movie seriously needs to be cut down. For example, there are four villains in this film. That's right four Beetlejuice and three new ones. And if you're wondering, wow, how are they ever gonna introduce, develop, and conclude four villain arcs? And the answer is, they won't, because they don't have the time for it. Here's some free, very obvious editing advice, Timmy. One, cut out the ex-wife narrative completely. 
She serves absolutely no purpose in this film. And yes, I do mean that. There is no justification for her being in this movie. It's so obvious she should be cut out. It's mind boggling. I cannot believe professionals let this slide through. It's embarrassing. And yes, you should feel bad about it. Two, take the producer slash Lydia's love interest guy and completely cut out the love interest parts. It's just a distraction that ultimately goes nowhere and serves no purpose. Have him be more of a sleazebag producer that just wants to get Lydia back to shooting her show. He can play a kind of ortho role where he's part of the story but doesn't take up too much screen time. Because I think the character Rory was funny and had some good parts, he just took up way too much time. By just making those two edits alone, you will have freed up around 30 minutes of screen time. Precious time that you could use to, I don't know, maybe actually develop and conclude a Beetlejuice narrative and an actual narrative for the new villain, which was the better out of the three. Yeah, no, like a functional story. Oh, you need more time, Timmy Tams? I got you. You know how most stories start with an inciting incident? Well, this movie has several. Because remember, the four villain thing, which we already fixed. But the main inciting incident for this movie is, spoilers, the death and funeral of Charles, which is this scene that they show in the trailers. Unfortunately, this scene takes place around 30 minutes into the film. Yep. That means there is 30 minutes of pointless scenes that do nothing for the plot. Every piece of information we learn in that first 30 minutes could be summed up with a few lines of dialogue. Dialogue that already exists in the film later on, so you don't even have to do anything. Cut out the first 30 minutes and start the movie in the graveyard. This is where your movie starts, Tim. There, you see? I just gave you a whole hour to focus and develop what little story was left in that 44 minutes. That's called editing. You're welcome. The first one is free, Timothy. The next one's gonna cost ya. Those are the main things, but there is also a lot of other things you need to edit out, like cut out all the dead, long-lost ex-husband scenes. Or better yet, use that time I just gave you to actually develop that plot thread. Because as it is, it's a pointless, awkward mess. Lastly, you need to cut the runtime of your comedic bits in half. Like the wedding singing bit, which I liked. You know, it was a callback to the dinner scene of the first movie. However, that scene lasted less than a minute. It wasn't five minutes long. No, Tim, you can't have a five minute sing along in the middle of your movie. No. Ugh. And that really just sums it up. With no editor willing to step in and say no, the whole movie just became an absolute mess. The only good things about this movie were the overall aesthetic cause it's classic Tim Burton, and of course the acting prowess of Michael Keaton and Catherine O'Hara, who try and do their best to carry this film, but they can only do so much. God knows Winona Ryder and everyone's favorite plank of wood, Jenna Ortega, did not help at all. It really does suck because they had all the elements to make a good movie. They just completely dropped the ball. So, like I said, I don't recommend you see this movie in theaters. You could just wait till it comes out on streaming services if you're interested. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for being here. I appreciate you and I'll catch you at the next one.